Welcome back to The Factor Uncensored. This next story has a lot of people divided in this country. The New York City Public Health Department unveiled a new vending machine that may be legal depending on where you're located. It features drug paraphernalia, including actual crack pipes. You heard of that? Crack pipes, anti-overdose medicines like Narcan, hygiene kits, and condoms. There's no cost to access any of this, and it's very popular already. People clean out the crack pipes. <laughs> what would you expect them to do from the vending machine overnight? Let's bring in our next guest into this conversation. Joining me now, Dr. Dale Shali from Archpoint Pain Institute, along with Matilda Saragosa, who has helped many people to get off of drugs, and you've dealt with your own issues before. Right. So when you see programs like this, a vending machine to give you a crack pipe so you won't get, I guess, infected or, 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 or die. What would be your thoughts on this? I mean, I'm, if, if, if I was in my addiction and I come with the dope fee mentality, I'm going to go get all those free crack pipes. I'm probably going to go back out there and sell them to somebody else. That's just my thoughts. Wow. So, I mean, and then we we were discussing here about... I, you know what? I never thought about that. Because I come it's with... A it's a hustle. It's a hustle. It's a hustle, yeah. It'd be a hustle. But I and so it's it's not delivering what, yeah. in your your opinion, what it should do. And Dr. Ali will bring you in just after this. Well, I mean, I I, I believe it could, if, but I doubt it very seriously. I mm -hmm. really do doubt it very seriously. Now, for the other items that they have available, I could see them justifying and helping the individuals because, of course, we're all for, we're all about saving lives. But the crack pipe piece, I was just, just sharing with him. I'm just struggling with it. I'm so struggling with it, and I'm very hard. I say I think it's a step in the right direction, right? Um, there's a big stigma involved behind uh, access, and that's been biggest challenge, in my opinion, as it relates to uh, folks getting appropriate treatment and appropriate medications for such a such an addiction. And so I think it's a step in the right direction. Um, I think we also need to talk about preventing this as well, right? And that's where therapists and counselors come into place. But I think what some of these cities have done is doing the right thing by offering some of these things. You know whether crack pipes should be offered in it as well. That's a little controversial, but I think as it relates to condoms in, in a way of uh, spreading uh, bad diseases like hepatitis, HIV, that's in the right direction. I also think that Narcan, which, you know, is a medication that can save lives for folks who have been overdosed on opioids, um, these, are these are drugs that people are getting from the streets. As a pain management physician, I see this daily where we test folks that are on opioids or they may not be on opioids, and we find that they're laced, some of these medications are laced with uh, fentanyl and mm -hmm. other uh, opioids that they may not be aware of that they may be obtaining from the streets. So I think we're heading in the right direction, and I think it's uh, very important to discuss this point, um, and I think it's something that we should consider bringing into our city as well. If we have individuals, Dr. Ali, who are taking advantage of the situation, like Matilda says, and, and she knows what what reality is out there sure. what would you do what would you do different differently if if anything possible because if she's saying they'll go to those vending machines and sell those crack pipes mm -hmm. I said, then those, it defeats the purpose. Right, well, then those people that they've bought those crack pipes uh, from now have access to new pipes, right? Otherwise, they may be using old pipes. And so it's a way Look of... Look at this. <laughs> We're coming up with solution. <laughs> that is right, though, right? I mean, I can go to the store and get the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna buy that is right. Buy that's, so, that's right. I mean, but the, the, the goal is, and we were discussing this, the goal is just prevention. Correct. And I'm in agreement with the, the, the direction that they're heading. I feel like it could save a lot of lives, you know? Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, I also feel like at the back end, we're still not addressing the underlying issues. I would like to get these people into some treatment, get them the actual help, and surround them with support, not just supply them with the need. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things you and I have talked about quite some time about Narcan. Correct. And having that in place for those who are not getting treatment, but just in case something goes wrong. That's exactly right, Isaiah. So what happens is that people are scared to go talk to physicians or uh, other folks that may, you know, judge them, that may, you know, uh, take action against them, or they may think that they're going to be involved in some sort of system or some sort of research or something like that, which a lot of that's not true, obviously, but there is that stigma involved. And so that's why it's so important to uh, give folks that access that they can go to these vending machines anonymously and 
grab what they need and get access to what they need, um, and they can utilize that in case of an emergency like that. I've never been so mixed over crack pipes in my <laughs> life. You guys make both great <laughs> arguments. Still ahead here.